All right, we found the church. The Basilica of St. John Lateran is the oldest and the highest ranking of all major basilicas in Rome. Well, there are only four. The St. Peter's Basilica, Basilica of St. Paul outside the walls, Basilica di Santa Maria Maggiore, and this one. You know, I thought St. Peter's was the highest ranking of all of them, but I guess not. Anyway, this is the oldest public church in Rome, as well as the whole Western world. Built in the 14th century AD, it endured constructions due to fires, earthquakes, and eventually it was demolished and rebuilt completely in the 15th century. And it was finally completed in 1735. You can just imagine the history surrounding this church. It's just too much for me to say. I couldn't even finish reading all of it. But I guess the most important information I could say is that this is the head of all the churches in Rome, which pretty much means the whole world. It's basically the mother of all churches. Alright, we're gonna go inside. Check out the Basilica. There is no fee to get inside the church. You'll just have to pass through security, that's all. Oh, look at those doors. This place is massive, dude. It's pretty big. Man, it must be amazing inside. That bronze door right there is called the Holy Door. All four major basilicas here in Rome has it, and some major basilicas all over the world as well. These doors are normally sealed and cannot be opened except during jubilee years, which are every 25 or 50 years. It symbolizes internal renewal from sins for people who enter through it. I know who this is. Looks like Caesar, but I doubt that it's Caesar. Oh wow, oh my gosh, it's huge. Man, the basilicas here, they're pretty big. It's massive. So the basilica's interior, as you can see, is big. It's about 460 feet long and 240 feet wide. The walls in the main hall is surrounded with these huge sculptures. They are of the 12 apostles of Christ. And when you look up at the ceiling and the detailed woodwork, it's just amazing. The church is filled with mosaics and frescoes. It also has what's called the holy stairs, which we missed. But just being here, especially now that I found out its importance, was already an experience worth remembering. As we got closer to the altar, I found this. Everybody's uh, taking pictures of this. Let's see what it is. This is the tomb of Pope Martin V, who served as the Pope from 1417 until his death in 1431. And overlooking the tomb is a statue of St. John the Baptist. Let's get close on this. So this is the tomb of Pope St. Martin V. I think it's so rich. Uh, Pope Martin. It's a uh, tomb. People are throwing like 20. Yeah, I know. They're, they're throwing like money. Look at that. There's like money everywhere. There's a hundred right there. Yeah, right there. I've never seen a hundred in There's a hundred right there. Right there. Maybe it's not euro, huh? There's dollars. I'm not sure why people throw money at the tomb. I tried looking it up and I couldn't find anything about it. Most likely people throw money here to receive good luck or good fortune. Man, I don't know if that's real gold. It kind of looks like real gold, but... The ceiling definitely looks like real gold. Because um, there's security in this basilica. But what's impressive are all these paintings on the wall. That's impressive, look at that. That's fresco, somebody went up there and actually painted that. 
And it's all over the walls here. Even on this like stand in the middle. That's actually the high altar. It's like gold everywhere. Now this part, which is the centerpiece of the whole basilica. Um, this is actually the Papal Cathedral. And it's located here at the apse of the church. Maybe. I think really that is gold right there. But it's pretty, pretty impressive. And there's a throne right in the middle. We'll walk past this. Maybe. An organ right there or a harpsichord. Yeah, there's actually one more on each side. There is. Here is the centerpiece. Um, I don't know what it's really used for. I think the priest sits here and does his um a sermon. There you go. This is where he does his sermon. Let's go this way. another side of the wall those are actually like um, organ like um, the hopsichord or the organ it's um those pipes are definitely for that but man It's actually free to get in the church. There's no fee. So, which is cool. And you can pretty much explore everything in here. Hmm. So, after exploring this church, just down the street, we looked for this other basilica called the Basilica of St. Clement. Okay, the cathedral was supposed to be here somewhere, but we can't find it. It's the Cathedral of San Clemente. Uh, Whatever, but the thing about it, what's cool is that if you look here, if you look straight right there, is the Colosseum. Watch, I'll zoom on to it. See that? That is the Colosseum right there. That one. We weren't able to find the Cathedral of St. Clement, as I put it. So instead, we headed to another cathedral or basilica, which is one of the four major basilicas here in Rome. It's the Basilica di Santa Maria Maggiore. Colosseum. But we're heading that way, so let's go. Okay, so we finally made it. This is uh, the Basilica of Santa Maria Maggiore. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's one of the famous basilicas here in Rome. It's our last stop basically and we pretty much went all over Rome. The cool part about it is that we just walked everywhere. So now we're just gonna go enter the Basilica. Prego? Yes. Heading inside now. But first, security. Finally got out of the um, security line. And we're gonna head inside now. Let's do it. I guess there's a price. Um, there's a fee if you want to go to the very top of the chapel. Which is only like 3 euros. But we decided not to. We decided to just see the chapel on its own. Oh my gosh. So like I said, this basilica is one of the major basilicas here in Rome. And it's the largest Catholic church that's dedicated to the Virgin Mary. The basilica was established in 432 and due to renovations and additional constructions, it was finally completed as what you see here in 1743. This church is also impressive like the Basilica of St. John Lateran. The interior is also filled with mosaics, frescoes, sculptures, and an amazing golden frame ceiling. But most of the artworks here are in reference or in dedication to the Virgin Mary. Okay, so I'm inside the basilica right now. I don't know if you can hear me, but 
Wow, it's really tough to focus the lighting here. It's really dark in here. It's not as uh, bright, but my camera is pretty good. It can pretty good in low light and glad. Um, here, that's the main chapel right there. Like as always, like on the sides are like statues, like sculptures. But this one has like pillars all over the sides too, you know? What is in there? See, there's a door right there. I don't know if that's the guided tour. Let's go, let's try and see. What I spent what hours is. trying to find some information about this room and came up with nothing. I think it's called the Baptistry. I have no idea what it's for or what it represents, but all I know is that people come here to purchase tickets to get an access tour of the upper level of the chapel. There's like a ticket booth in there. But um, there's a gold statue in, this, in the middle part of this thing. I don't know. Look at this. Oh, it's a gold statue of Jesus. I don't think that's a statue of Jesus, but definitely this room has some kind of purpose. I mean, just looking at the artwork surrounding this room, as well as the frescoes on the ceiling, is really something. It's just so weird I can't find any information about this. I don't know where the guided tour is, I think it's somewhere here. But, um, it's okay, three euros. I mean, this is. Just being here is amazing already. Yeah. I was thinking about getting the guided tour, which was only like five dollars, but we skipped it and decided to do it ourselves. Yeah, to the very top. I think there's a dome at the very top. I don't know if you can see that priest, but he's Filipino. This isn't like an active church. There's people confessing, and there's priests everywhere. But, um, yeah, I'm gonna go to this part now, to the main part of the basilica. So this area is the nave, where you'll find the high altar of the church. It's mainly reserved for the Pope and for some special celebrations. This canopy you see here, surrounding the altar, has four stone columns gilded with bronze and a fully decorated dome. And right behind the altar is the apse. It's covered with frescoes and mosaics. This is basically the central and probably the most important part of the church. But what's really interesting, as we walk closer, is this area just in front of the altar. This is called the Crypt of the Nativity, or Bethlehem Crypt. It is said to contain wood from the crib of Jesus Christ, which is inside a crystal urn trimmed in silver. This is also a burial place for Saint Jerome, who translated the Bible in Latin, and was the doctor of the church in the 4th century. Um, I'm gonna go inside, get close to it. <laughs> this sculpture is of Pope Pius IX, who was the longest reigning Pope in history. He served over 31 years as Pope. I'm not really sure who created this sculpture, but it sits here facing this. That's the urn, by the way, which supposedly contains the wood from the crib of Jesus. People taking pictures. <coughs> we didn't stay here that long, because for some reason a lot of people down there were coughing all over the place. Anyway, we walked around the church a bit more, checking out the artworks and the chapels inside this building. See right on the right side of the chapel, or the left side if you're coming in. They're having a mass right here right now. This is the Borghese Chapel. It's where you'll find that painting above the altar called the Salus Papuli Romani, or Salvation of the Roman People. It is said to be painted a thousand years ago by Saint Luke the Evangelist. Legend has it that it helped keep away the plague from the city. This chapel is decorated with a lot of art and it's a very popular part of the basilica. So that's it, we're gonna head back to the hotel, 
rest up a bit because we reserved the dinner on this on the restaurant that we really like that we've been to for about the past three days now <laughs> and we re we did reserve um a table we're gonna eat dinner there and I don't know I'm gonna probably get a whole bunch of plates um, I'll definitely get the um, steak again that's for sure and the pasta as well so all right so let's go like I said we ended up reserving a table at the restaurant we've been going to for the past few days I actually wanted to try out different restaurants, but the food and service in this restaurant was so amazing. Why go anywhere else? For sure, we're gonna get the we're gonna get the bass. Okay, I'm gonna go get that one. I'm gonna get that one. I got the marrow. I'm not sure with mushrooms. I haven't tried that yet, but we'll see. That's our waiter right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, all, he's awesome. His name's Antonio. <laughs> I, I returned. We, I wanted to come here just because of this guy. Well, actually, the food is pretty good here, too. It's amazing. He split it up for us, which is really nice of him. So, this is the first pasta we had here in Rome. This is called Cacio e Pepe. I've already talked about this pasta in that video, so I won't talk about it anymore, except that it's simply made with cheese and pepper. And it also has become one of my favorite pastas ever. Gotta have this. You want some? Mm. Mm. Same consistency. This is exactly the taste of same. It's super hot. It's so good, man. This is just pepper. Che what is that? Cream and cheese and pepper. That's it. And the pasta, man, I can't get over the pasta, how the texture. It's really firm. No. Mm, God. Do they have lemon on it? I don't know. It might be. It's the best. It's really thick. After eating the pasta, it's time to try this. I ordered this for myself. It's called Osobuco con fungi or bone marrow with mushrooms. Osobuco, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, is a dish from the region of Lombardy. It's veal shanks braised in wine, broth, and vegetables. I believe this one is cooked based on the modern recipe that includes tomatoes, carrots, celery, and onions. Oh my goodness. I don't know how to start this. Okay, I know. This is the marrow. So I'm, I guess I'm gonna go for the marrow. Uh, this is like the bone. Oh, look at that. The marrow just, just dropped. This is the marrow. It's bone marrow. Oh man. Oh my goodness. That's really different. It has like tomatoes. Is it different from what I'm used to? Because it has like the tomato based. So I'm gonna try the meat. Mm. 
That is really good. That is really, really good. <laughs> but it's a spa. <laughs> Although the steak, oh yeah, this is really different though. I've had um bone marrow before, but this has its own different flavor. The sauce is different. Here, let me put some um, bread on this to get the sauce. Make sure you get all the sauce. Mm. Oh my God. I like it, but I like the steak better. Now on the menu, it says bass. And I know there's different kinds of bass, so I'm not sure which one this is. It looks like it was just pan fried in olive oil. Nothing really special. Possibly baked as well, but I doubt it. Even though it looks simple, it still looked and smelled really good. She ordered this and was kind enough to have me try it. Alright, I got myself the bass. But it fell into the sauce though, but... Mm. That is different. Yeah. The bass is cooked perfectly. It's really soft. But I have to admit, the bass I had in London was way better. That one was really amazing. The only thing I really need more of this is the bone marrow. I need more marrow. I was thinking about the bone being this long and it has the marrow in there. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't expecting there's gonna be meat here. But I don't mind. There's more barrel right here. This is this I might have to suck this. Oh man, look at that. Yep. Look at that. It just falls apart. Before we came here, I knew I was going to order the steak. I had this a few days ago here, and the one I had was really weird. It was tough to cut with a knife, but it was tender and really flavorful when I ate it. Well, one thing for sure, this one looks more juicier than the other. You know, now that I think about it, I wonder why they never asked me how I wanted this cooked. Restaurants usually do. Anyway, this steak also came with a side of fries. Alright, let's do this. This actually looks better than the first. Oh man, I hope so. It feels hard. I know. Split. I decided to share this because she wasn't able to eat the first time I had it. And I think she should because I already know just by cutting through it that this was going to be good. Oh, that was soft right there. <laughs> It's like the same, same texture. It's medium. That's a medium right there. Oh my god, it smells so good. Which one? <laughs> no, you can have this one. I gave it the best one. Ooh. Oh yeah, because I had this before and let's put this in the middle. There you go. Let's do this. Soft? Really? Oh, it's the same. <laughs> Oh my god. It's the same. It's the same. It's so juicy. It's so weird, dude. It's 
so good, man. I don't know how they, the guy, whoever cooks this, is just seasoned this perfectly. Mm -hmm. Right? It's not too salty. She's doing it just perfectly. I had this like a few days ago. And I can't stop thinking about it. It's so good. I was kind of hesitant to take to, try, to order it today because I don't want to ruin their first experience. But like, look, it, it cuts hard. It's weird. But once you put it in your mouth, it's so tender. Right? Oh my god. And it really just breaks apart. I think this is my favorite here. And the um, pasta, the first dish we had. I, I like that one. Potatoes are fresh. I don't know if they deep fried this or not. It doesn't look like it. It's, like, it's just pan fried. Yep. It's just pan fried. The steak is so deceiving. It seems like it's hard, but it's actually soft. You know, ever since we came to this restaurant, I wanted to try their tiramisu. But every time we're ready to order it, it's already gone. Well, it happened here again, so we ended up ordering this. And to be honest, I don't even remember this at all. It's the last dessert. Alright, I'm gonna try the first bite here. Let's get a big one. It smells good. It smells creamy. Oh, we probably won't like this. Yeah, it's like lemon. Lemony with nuts. Mm. Very rich. But, cappuccino. That's it. <laughs> but it's not sweet. Oh, look at her. Okay. Our, our waiter made um, a face on your cappuccino. It's not the best, but <laughs> it, is, it is funny. He's really nice, though. My first ever cappuccino in my life. I've never had coffee. Yeah, I don't drink coffee. I've never had this. This is my first time I'm going to try. Oh my god. It's super strong. Is it bitter? I was I was thinking about there's gonna be like like some cream or something. But man, this is like straight up coffee dude. Oh my gosh. Okay, one more before my battery runs out. No way. I'm never going to get used to it, drinking coffee. <laughs> no, I don't want to drink anymore. Right. Oh my god. Yeah. It's very bitter. It's not even sweet. Oh my gosh. So that pretty much ends this whole trip. The next day we're here at the airport waiting for our flight heading back to California. To sum up my whole trip, it was really amazing. We were able to accomplish everything we planned to see and do. From London to Madrid and here in Rome, we really didn't miss a thing. I'm always asked which one I liked the most and I have to say, the cities were different from one another but all of them had one thing in common. They had so much history and beauty, it's really hard to say. I guess they are all amazing in their own way but if you're going to ask me which city has the best food, I don't discriminate, I love them all. So now as always, I'm looking forward to see what's next and I've already planned my next trip.
I've been looking for this all over Rome. Well, not really looking for it, but I've been hoping we'd get this in a restaurant, the tiramisu. And I get to try it on the plane. 